virtual audiences. If you found us on LinkedIn, on YouTube, maybe Facebook, uh, not yet on TikTok, but this is the happy half hour. It's a discussion with leaders in the toy gift trend industry, where in this time of non-travel, we bring toy stories to you. Today's an extra special episode because we're, we're, we're traveling. We're traveling through conversation. We're going to meet my friend Scott Friedland, who owns a really cool toy store in Chicago. And we're going to show you what his store looks like. We're going to analyze what items are working, what he does differently because he's an incredible member of this specialty toy community. And, uh, and we'll extract some insights. Uh, Scott, say hello. Hey, thanks for having me on the podcast. Uh, would you mind telling us what makes your store, could you introduce us to the magic of Timeless Toys? Absolutely. Timeless Toys is an urban oasis for children in the city of Chicago. Uh, we are on the north end in a neighborhood called Lincoln Square. And one of the cool things about Lincoln Square, it is a uh, traditional German neighborhood in Chicago. So we're designed to be a traditional German toy shop. And most people who come to us uh, who have been to the toy shops in Germany say that we remind them of their of their toy stores back home. So that's 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 timeless toys. We're here to get city kids the experience of play uh, and education. Awesome. awesome. Uh, stepping back, I mentioned that there's this organization out there called Astra, the, Associ the Association of Specialty Toy Retailers of America. I know you're a part of it. Can you tell us what makes specialty special? What experiences do you offer the consumer that a national mass merchant cannot? What makes specialty special is the environment and the customer service. We have an inviting place that kids and families can come into play, uh, a place that brings back childhood memories. You know, one of my favorite parts of this business is when adults walk into the store and you see their eyes glow like they just reverted back to childhood. That's, a, that's such a special moment that they don't get in some of the you know, bigger mass retailers. Um, the other thing is, like I said, is the customer service piece. Uh, all, all the staff in my store, we have backgrounds in education, early childhood development, child psychology. So we're not necessarily here to find what the most popular toy is uh, based, on your, based on your favorite TV show, but we're here to ask questions and find what the right toy is for the child or adult that you're shopping for. And that's what makes us, uh, that's what separates us from the pack uh, in specialty retail. We have that ability to interact one-on-one -on -one with the customers. Wow, that's incredible. You, you, you're, wait, can you rewind that, say that again? You actually have educators and child, did you say psychologists or therapists? On staff? Yeah, we have yeah we have uh, we have staff that has backgrounds in child psychology. Uh, they have uh, backgrounds in early childhood development. We have multiple previous uh, preschool teachers, kindergarten teachers, elementary school teachers on our staff. Uh, people who know play through the lens of education. That's really cool, man. Well, I I I feel like you have a unique perspective on things. And 2020 is an insane year. I'd love to understand how that is reflected in your best sellers and in your strategy overall. Uh, for example, what were your top five items in 2019 this time and what are they now? Yeah, and it's been a total change since 2019. Uh, 2019, we saw uh, the first half of the year, we're selling a lot of arts and crafts product. A lot of people, those getting those little gift and tchotchke things. One of our most popular items was Nido by Schilling. Yeah, uh, we you know Easter Easter is always this time of year, so plush is always big plush bunnies, as well as outdoor items and books. This year we've seen a little bit of a shift. Our, our art supplies are still big, but things that usually sell best for us fourth quarter are are selling during this time because people need things to do at home. So uh, big is games right now. We're talking uh, brain teasers. We're selling the classic games really well. Your Connect Four battleships. Uh, the things that mom and dad played when they were kids and now they want to play it with their own kids. Uh, construction and Lego is huge right now, uh, much larger this time of year than usual. And puzzles too. Puzzles, I, I can't get a hold of puzzles anymore. Any thousand piece puzzle that comes into the store flies right off the shelf. Thousand, so, what is it about the thousand piece over any other? 
I think thousand piece. So usually we sell the lower piece puzzles really well. Um, and I think we're selling a lot more puzzles for adults now because the adults want entertainment also. And I think adults come in and they think a thousand pieces that like good solid starting point. Um, also there tends to be the most, uh, most diverse artwork in the thousand piece puzzle. I think with puzzle companies that tends to be the most popular, uh, you know, as far as the adult puzzles go. So people are seeing the designs of it and, and seeing that everyone else is doing these thousand piece puzzles. Uh, so the adults are, are jumping in on that, which is great. It's awesome, man. Uh, can I ask you your top five items so far year to date? Sure. So uh, I have my list here. So my top five year to date um, for arts and cla crafts, it's klutz books. Uh, klutz are great because nice. they, it, yeah, it's an all in one package. Um, perfect price point and a, and a variety of ages, age ranges too. Um, for games, my number one seller this year is actually Connect Four. It's it's something that we've always carried because we carry a lot of the classic games, and you know people people bought it. Um, but what I'm seeing is that uh, I actually had one family that bought three or four of them and sent them out to other family members, and they're playing over Zoom with each other. Uh, it's it's such an easy game that you can play virtually over Zoom as long as everyone has one. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Love it. exactly. Uh, and it, it cross age ranges too. Uh, so people are playing with their grandparents and all that stuff. Um, Lego is our number one construction item right now. Uh, and, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Lego, Lego is ever growing. And with all the new licenses they get every year, that's, that's huge for us. Um, like I said, those, those thousand piece puzzles, specifically Robinsberger for us has been really big. And another big puzzle that uh, is in our top sellers is Ibu puzzles because they focus a lot of puzzles on uh, on social justice and current issues, and that people have been using that as a way to have fun, but also teach their families about you know the current status of the United States and what's going on in the world. Absolutely, play has a has a role in in the most unex, unexpected of places. Yeah, thank and thank you for that transparency. Sorry, go ahead, Scott. Oh, of course. I was just going to add one more. Our, our uh, best-selling outdoor item is actually this little package called, uh, it's called the, uh, it's like the outdoor play set and it's by Schilling. It's a little $15 box. It comes sure. with a magnifying glass. Um, it's got a whole book full of activities and fun things to do outside. And we actually sell it as part of our summer camp in a box for mm -hmm. kids. That are, uh, shilling. Yeah, a lot of Schilling this year. Absolutely. Great company. <laughs> uh yeah that's 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 awesome there was a meme i just shared uh it was like nine-year-old me going to a toy store and it's andy dwyer like getting super excited and it's 35 year old me same exact expression you know i get excited yeah the toy, the toy store man as you should uh, it reminds us all that we don't need to be so serious all the time you know in this world where everything's a little bit crazy just laying back and having fun even as an adult and getting to play it's is it's more important now than it ever has been yeah man and i'd like to thank you again for being so transparent with with data i think data uh transparency is a, a core like a core way for us to get better and one of the best practices that i recommend for any anybody i'm working with you know use data to build strategy uh, i'd like to talk to you about best practices overall and i'd like to know some of the best practices from your vendors, reps, collaborators, local print shops, bakeries, anybody who's collaborating with you well? Yeah, I think right now, some of the best practices uh, from, as you mentioned before, the, you know, Astra, um, some of the vendors, reps, uh, I, I'm also the president of the Chamber of Commerce here in Lincoln Square, so the Chamber of Commerce is, is a big collaborator for us, is interest in the customer and their needs as opposed to just being a salesperson. Um, during this whole COVID-19, the people who are looking out for others yeah. uh, and have an interest in actually what's happening and not just pushing product one way or the other are the people who are making those long-term relationships and making business better. So, for instance, my best reps are the ones that know my tendencies. They know my store. They come into my store. 
they'll, you know, the best thing I could ever hear from a rep is when they say, there's this product is awesome. Don't buy it because don't buy it because even though it's a great product, it's just not going to work for you and your customer. You know, they know me that well. So they, they, they can step back and not just be a salesperson. Um, they know how to get me to try something as far as vendors, um, being interested in, in what we do as a business again. So my best vendors care about promoting us and promoting small toys and not just necessarily the product that they carry. Uh, one vendor, one vendor who, uh, had stuck in my mind is Ape. Uh, Cassidy yeah. Smith from Hoppe is sure. I've had multiple conversations with him on just how yeah Cassie, he, you know one of the biggest conversations we've had is he reaches out to me and just says how can I help you be a better business how can we help you get past COVID it has nothing to do with Hoppe um, and, and those types of things mean much more than the sales relationship and that's how companies are going to survive especially in a world like today look man uh, I hate to be uh, you can have both. You can, you can have business and you can care about, you know, your customers because they yeah. come hand in hand. You, you just have to prioritize them correctly. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with you. In the end, we're, we're here, we're here for a reason. You know, we all need to stay in business and we, and we need to push our product, but I think there needs to be, uh, it, it can't be too much of one or the other. They have, there has to definitely be a balance there. Yeah. Well, uh, good segue for, uh, I'd like to know about, like in this time of reflection, I guess, what are some ways that specialty toy and the toy industry as a whole can improve? Yeah, so I think COVID has really pushed specialty toys to improve. One of the things that I've noticed since my time in, my, in the toy industry in, as specialty toys is that a lot of retailers have been around for a long time and they're a little bit, sometimes can be a little bit closed minded on how they do business. Um, they're not willing to do business with, with vendors that have a slightly lower margin than what they're used to working with. Uh, they're not willing to take on new technology right away. And I think when COVID hit, that really pushed a lot of, uh, a lot of stores to build a new website, start using social media and video and this type of stuff. Um, sure. They start, yeah, exactly. Start thinking about the products that they haven't been carrying in the stores that their customers really want and can't get anywhere else. And uh, so I think that's been huge for us. And I think the toy industry, uh, the specialty toy industry, especially needs to continue moving that way. Uh, we need to be competitor in the bigger market. I think something as an overall as a toy industry, speaking of margins, though, is that um, altogether, we, uh, I think we need to do a better job of not devaluing our, our own product. Um, I've noticed before, um, and, and it's getting better over the years, is that, you know, that for certain items, there's kind of a race to the bottom as yeah. far as how much it can cost. And, you know, that doesn't really, the race to the bottom gets you nowhere. Um, yeah. And you know, one, one thing that I loved Although I'm not, a, I'm, I don't have any children that I'm buying for. So my 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 take on this is a little bit more as a marketeer. I loved when specialty stores pivoted to shop by a price point. So me as a consumer can say, you the incredible curator. Here's fifty dollars. That's my budget, and know that I'm going to get an incredible box of incredible toys. Like, yeah, that to me was you guys not shouting from the mountaintops that we know what kids want, but you 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 proved it. Like the proof was in the pudding when you got that box. You're like, oh my god, what an incredible assortment! Yeah, that's and that's part of the thing is you know we're starting to really be inventive. We did that uh, here at Timeless Toys. We did our first ever uh, Easter uh, customized Easter basket, and when I say customized, I mean. All it was is you picked a price point, $20, $30, $40, $50, $50, and all you did was describe your kid to me, and I built the basket for you, sent it right to your house, and we had so much great feedback on that because we really know about kids, and it was a lot of products that parents, those parents usually would not have bought themselves, but because we put it in the basket, they got it, and they loved it, 
and now we're doing the mystery box outside of Easter. So again, you could buy a $100, $200 mystery box and just describe the kids to us. We'll wrap a whole bunch of things that we think they're gonna love and send it their way because we are the ones that know the kids. That's it, man. Like we, discovery is, we, we as a culture will adapt to find it because we, we gravitate towards it and kids especially. You know, we don't have to spend time like necessarily figuring out each and every toy and buying it. It's about finding a person that knows each and every toy like you that's in the community. I love it, man. Yeah, uh, that's that's what we're here for. That's what makes a specialty. Yeah, I, I dig it. So the Triple H was created to uh, for three main reasons. A distillation of why I go to trade shows. I'm looking for cool people, uh, interesting products and brands, and to extract insights. We've covered the first two with you, Scotty, and although we've covered plenty of insights, I think we know we all want more. Is there any other thing that you think we can take from you and extrapolate to other stores or just industry professionals or, or industry lawyers uh, who may be watching? Yeah, I mean, as far as insights go, I think um, one of the things that we're really going to focus on, at least in specialty toys, uh, going on further this year, is more of what's been happening. You know, with COVID, we have a lot of people who are working from home. So maybe if they're working from home, they're not sending their kids to daycare because uh, they don't have to, or maybe they can't afford it anymore. Um, we have, we're going to see more people switching to being homeschooled. Um, or, we're, you know, we're possibly going to hit another shutdown. So I think the focus going forward is really those educational homeschooling products or, th you know, or things to keep kids busy while mom and dad are working at home. Um, we're seeing a huge trend, you know, that huge shift in being home more often than, than what we're used to. So I think we're going to see a larger rise in, you know, STEM has always been popular, but I think that's going to be pushed a little bit further. Um, I, and I think those, um, and with that, there's a struggle with parents right now on limiting screen time. So we're going to see a shift in focus back to those, those simple, you know, root toys that get kids engaged and teach them the same things that they can learn from watching um, you know, something on YouTube, but by actually playing with it. Um, so I think we're, you know, I think the trend is actually going to switch back towards uh, specialty toy and those educational products as we go forward. Well done. I like that a lot. Taking the things they would see on YouTube and actually playing with it. I like it. Uh, Scotty, putting you on the spot, what were you wrong about? What toy did you think was going to be a flop but ended up being a huge success? Uh, um, yeah, uh, mostly everything. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong about a lot of stuff, but uh, I, I think one of the biggest things I was totally wrong about um, was fidget toys. So, like the thing that comes to F's my mind first and foremost was was fidget spinners. I remember going to Toy Fair and people are talking up fidget spinners. They're showing it to me and I'm looking, I'm like, I don't get it. Yeah. Like, what, <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe I'm just not a fidgeter as much as other people. Um, but fidget spinners were, were huge. And so one of the big things now is Shishibo. Uh, oh, Shishibo. Yeah, so I looked at Shishibo as like, I, again, I don't get it. Like, what is, what is this? I don't know. Um, yeah, and it's, and it's huge. We, we sound like crazy. And uh, I, I didn't realize the, uh, the importance of fidget toys and really how, how popular they were going to get. And I'm happy that there were some people who convinced me to, uh, to buy into fidget spinners. Yeah, there you go. You, shout you out <laughs> Shishibo. So this little contraption... This is a, a prototype. You can see N38. It's just the white one because this is their mini one. So this is a new oh, wow. one coming out. Yeah. And, and uh, it, it can do all sorts of like pretty cool shapes that I used to be able to do with ease. But I'm going to jump back into it because it's like riding a bike. Oh, I got to hold it up here. Um, yeah, you're pretty quick at that. It, you know, I have a lot of fidget energy. I got to say, 
I too had no idea the fidget trend was coming. And uh, anybody that I think tell, will, tells you like they predicted spinners would be as big as they were are, no, just not, not remotely right, can't be. But um, it's back into the square. A lot of there fake you go. There. that was created. I should have done all six shapes. I have a better video for it. But Scotty, <laughs> you made it to the very end. It is a segment we like to call the creation of positive energy, where you, Scott Freeland of Timeless Toys, get to shout out anyone, anywhere, doing a great job. The floor is yours. Yeah, I just want to, there's a few people on my list. I want to give a huge shout out to my staff. They are the reason that our doors are still open through all of COVID. They're awesome people. My wife, Leah, who has uh, really taken over family matters. I was gone for a month and a half on National Guard service uh, responding to COVID. So these people really uh, uh, ran everything for me. My dad, who's a partner in my business, Martha Burroughs, who founded Timeless Toys 26 years ago, and a huge shout out, as I mentioned before, to Cassidy Smith of Hoppe, a huge mentor of mine, and he uh, he just keeps bringing it on in the toy industry and uh, setting the trend. Very nicely done. Thank you very much. Shout out, Timeless Toys. Uh, your Instagram, please. Uh, it, you can find us at Timeless Toys Chicago on Instagram and Facebook, Timeless Toys Shy on Twitter. You're the man. Thank you so much. Bye.